Hey friends, welcome back to our little homestead here in Nebraska, here at Mark Kelly Farm. We got a high of 65 degrees today. Can you believe that in August? We're going to take full advantage of that. We're going to be in the shop today because it's not going to be like an oven out here. And we're going to build something that I've been needing to build for a while and we'll show you what it is. All right, we have our metal bandsaw, folks. If you remember, we bought this at auction here a while back, and it's been working well for us. However, it's like a big boat anchor here in the middle of my shop that I cannot move around. So I like all of the equipment here in my shop to be on wheels so we can maximize the space here in the shop. So we're going to build a little cart for this thing today. It's going to be pretty straightforward. And I got some other examples over here that I'll show you. So this is the one we built for the table saw. And then we had built another one here for the band saw. So we can move this stuff around. We've got locking wheels on them. Now I'm going to change my design up a little bit because um, some problems I've ran into with these. And one of the problems being the locking levers for the wheels are up under there where they're hard to get at with your feet. So we're gonna to try to remedy that and we're also going to make the new one a little more stable, a wider footprint than these. Not that I've had a problem with these, but uh, with that other saw, it's kind of narrow. So we want to make sure we're not top heavy and it's gonna start teetering around on us. So we've got some inch and a half angle like a one eighth wall on it and that'll be plenty for what we're doing so what we're going to do is we're going to basically box this in in the same fashion that we did our other two implements however the legs on the ends i'm going to run out a little bit further so i can put my casters out a little bit further to make it a better footprint side to side so we're not wanting to tip around and in my mind, that'll also put the locking mechanism out further to where I can get at them. Now we purchased our casters that we're going to use. These are 110 pound capacity uh, casters. And that thing probably weighs more than 110 pounds. However, we're gonna have four, four casters underneath it. So we times that by four. That gives us a 440 pound capacity for this little cart that we're going to do. So that's going to put us well underneath the weight of that saw. So I'm going to start doing some measuring and we're going to start cutting some of our angle iron for this cart. Taking our measurements across this way, we have 16 inches outside to outside. And that dimension won't change because that's a fixed distance in that metal piece. And then when we measured the outer portion out here, this dimension can actually change because you can imagine these legs can move back and forth like a half an inch or more, you know, because they're not fixed down on the bottom together. So you can kick these legs around a little bit. So we got kind of... Uh, we kicked them around so we had the same dimension on both sides. And then our measurement on our cart that we're going to make, we're going to add a half an inch to the inside diameter of this cart. So we have about a quarter inch play all the way around. So it's not fitting super tight. So I like to do a three dimensional drawing of what we're going to be doing. So this is what it's going to look like. And we're going to make, remember the end one's a little bit longer. So we need six and a half, 16 and a half inches inside diameter in this tray portion. And we need 38 and a quarter inches inside diameter from here to here. So we'll make these pieces an uh, inch and a half longer on either side to accommodate our caster holes here. So we'll just add that much on both sides and we can start getting these pieces cut. 
So here's how we're going to figure out the end pieces. We have we want 16 and a half inch ID, and then I want to hang over an inch and a half on either side because that's the same same as the width of the material we're using, so it'll look symmetrical. So that's an inch and a half there, inch and a half there, which is three inches. So that'll give us 19 and a half. But we also have to allow for the thickness of material on this piece and this piece, which is an eighth of an inch. So that is a quarter. So we're going to end up with 19 and three quarters inches outside to outside on these end pieces. So let's get those cut. 19 and three quarters. So we're using the saw in question here. First cut we made was just to square up the end of our material. Now we'll pull out and get our 19 and three quarters. Now to get our measurement on this saw is super easy because all you got to do is butt your tape up against the blade and measure out 19 and three quarters and you're good to go. Now remember we need two pieces of that so I took this iron out and I switched it around so our square cut is now on that end. Now for this one you would butt the tape against that side of the blade and measure 19 and 3 quarters to the end there. That way we got a nice square cut on both sides. Now our long pieces, the way that we're going to do our joint over here, they're going to butt right up against the side pieces. So we want to cut these long pieces at the exact measurement that we have here, which is 38 and a quarter. And that will guarantee that we have 38 and a quarter inside diameter inside the tray. And we'll show you how to, we're going to make this little joint here in a minute. Now here's our leftover pieces, which is commonly called drop. Now I'll throw this piece away because that's not going to be useful, but something this small, even I will not throw that away because you never know when you need like an L bracket or something like that. And a lot of times, um, if you go to a steel place and they have a drop pile or a scrap pile, you can get things pretty cheap or even free if they'll let you dig through their drop or their scrap, or you can get it at a discounted price because if this is close to what you need, if you buy this whole thing, you don't have to pay a cut charge to get the length that you want because they'll charge you extra to cut it. So you can save money by doing that. Now, before we get too far along, there's some um, holes that need to be made in the shorter pieces. And if you remember, we're going to stick over an inch and a half. So I just set my square on three quarters of an inch. And then I came in here and just made a mark on these. And I can eyeball center over on the drill press where I can just set my uh, vice over there to where it doesn't move side to side and that way it'll be in the center there but uh like my boss used to tell me all the time you're not building a clock dude now we've went ahead and just locked our tables and everything down to where this thing isn't going to move thing you got to remember is even though you're using inch and a half material you have to account for this wall thickness when you're going to have something in here if you were to go right dead center Sometimes your nut or your washer will interfere over here. So you got to go in the center of this portion, not so much in the center of the whole thing. So with this being an inch and a half and you got an eighth inch material here, you're only an inch and three eighths wide. So I like to drill right in the center of the inch and three eighths. But like I said, I'm eyeballing, but I've locked it down to where I'm going to get the same on both sides when I drill the other side. I forgot to mention, the other thing you need to make sure of is that you're not going to drill into your, your table on your, your clamp. You want to make sure you're ending up in the center of that to where you're not going to drill. When I used to work in commercial places, these things were all tore up because people screwing it up and drilling into them. And uh, you can look down here too. This is as wide as the slot is. You need to make sure that you're drilling somewhere within that slot. So you're not messing up your your vise. Now that we've got our piece out of here, this is the kind of thing I was telling you about right here. See where somebody drilled into that before? And it wasn't me, and I doubt if it was my uncle who I got this set up from, because he was a pretty skilled craftsman. But uh, always make sure you're 
you're missing that. Another helpful hint that some people do not know on these tri-squares is right down here on the bottom, you have this scribe that comes out of here to use for marking. So you just put your square on the mark it. You can see I used it to mark this line right here. And it gives you a real nice fine line to follow. And it just stores here in the bottom of your tri-square. There also used to be a level here, but I don't know how much I would trust a level this short. All right, we're almost there, folks, where we can get to welding. I wanted to show you how we're going to do this joint. Now, most people, when they do a joint, they'll put it together like this. They'll cut a 45 degree angle and then weld that together. Now, I don't like doing the 45 degree angle. I like doing just square cuts. And the best way to do that is say you were joining it corner to corner like this. What I'll do is I'll make a line here and then we'll cut this portion out as well, the thickness of this piece here. So this will actually lap over like that and then you're welding down across and this way it gives you a much more surface area it's a stronger joint and it comes out really clean and you're not messing with a bunch of angles now we're going to do that same idea but if you remember this piece is going to stick out an inch and a half over here so we're going to cut this piece out that same way to where it will slide all the way into there like that and weld like that that's why we needed to make this piece the the inside diameter because it's going to butt right up against there so we're going to cut this piece out here and we're going to cut a little bit off of the bottom of this so it'll slide right up against here and i'll show you better what it looks like once i get it done all right we just figured out this is inch and a quarter angle not inch and a half angle so I'm glad we figured that out before we started doing any uh, notching out. Now that will affect the length of these, but all that means is just going to be a little bit longer on the end. That's no big deal. So what I did is instead of an inch and three eighths, we have an inch and an eighth here now. I've just set the square at an inch and an eighth so I can get that measurement. And we mark that line. Now I want to cut that line completely off because I want a little bit of gap left in there when I weld. It gives me better penetration rather than just a butt weld. And then we'll come through here and we'll cut the back of that off of there. Now one more thing before you get to cutting, uh, if you need it, make sure you're making opposites because I've made that mistakes by cutting both of them the same way and then I'm messed up. But luckily on this one, all you'd have to do is flip it around so you wouldn't be messing up too bad. Now this is what your cut's going to look like, and if you see we cut a thickness of material out too, and then the other thing you want to do too is nip this corner off right here. The reason we got to nip that little corner off is because the inside corner of your angle iron is rounded. If we left that square it wouldn't butt up completely. You can see now it goes all the way into that corner, and that's what she looks like nice and tight, very easy to weld up. We've just got three more of those to cut. All right, we've got all of our corners cut. The other thing we did is we took our short pieces and we nipped the corners off of those because we're going to round those over when we do our sanding so they're not sharp edges. And it's a lot easier just to get them with the uh, four and a half inch grinder with the cutoff wheel. And then you don't have as much sanding to do. So now we're going to take our flapper wheel sander and clean all these edges up. Got all of our pieces cleaned up. These are the little pieces that we cut off of those angles. I don't throw these away either because you could use these for like capping off the end of a piece of square tube. Very handy. Just need a bin to organize all my little pieces in. All right, we've got the... Uh, frame over here on our welding table. I picked this table up for $20 a few weeks ago. Uh, it's a nice table, it's a nice welding table. It's got a metal top. Too short though, but I've remedied that with my jack stands for a while until I fix that. The only issue I had was there's a kind of a dip in the middle 
but I'm going to put a stiffener across there so this thing will be completely flat. Now the important thing is, is we have perfectly square corners. And when you have a, a table that has perfectly square corners, you can use it as a square. You just clamp your pieces onto the outer edges and your piece is automatically square. So all we have to do is maintain our distance in between, which is an inch and a half hanging over on both sides, which gives us 16 and a half on the inside. And because this thing is all clamped down and not gonna move around, we can just go ahead and weld her up. We don't have to keep checking for square and keep moving things around. We can just get her done. Now I'm still gonna do the opposing welding like I did on our uh, last project that we did out here. Anytime I weld one spot, I will weld the corresponding spot on the other side. That way everything's pulling in an equal amount in all directions. So we're gonna get the welder set up and we'll get this thing welded together. We got her all welded up and I flipped it over. And as I figured, because of the little gaps that we left in there, we penetrated all the way through. So all we had to do is kind of sand down where it over penetrated just a little bit. But we don't have to weld the bottom. But uh, we're all welded up. Got the corners all welded up nice all the way around. Now we're ready to put the wheels on this thing and then we'll be done. Some of you may criticize me for not spraying this with paint. But as you look around the shop, I'm not afraid of a little rust. And this cart that I made for the table saw years ago, like right out of high school, barely, barely got any rust on it at all. So we don't really have to worry about that. It doesn't rain in here in the shop. So let's get the wheels on this thing. All right, we got it all cleaned up and done, got the wheels put on. Now the smart thing to do would be to wait for Kelly to get home and have her help me put the saw on the cart. But I'm impatient and I don't like waiting around. Now I don't see it more like lack of patience. I just like seeing things through and getting them done. Now that's something you can use on these new fancy uh, oral boards and job interviews, folks. When they have that new cool question, what's your biggest strength and what's your biggest weakness? Say, I like to see things through to completion before I move on to other things. Don't tell them you're impatient. All right, we got it on there. Brandy, help me. So, rolls good. We can put it anywhere in the shop we want it now. And we can reach to lock things with my foot. So, success. Happy we got that done. So, folks, I hate to disappoint you, but if you were really enjoying this video, that's a wrap. That thing's done. We don't have much more to do on that. But we do have other projects that we're going to be doing, so make sure you pay attention if you want to see those. Make sure you hit that little bell button if you want to come back and see us. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you. We'll see you on the next video.